Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and in this video, I wanted to share the improvements we have made around availability and usability with Webhooks integration in the Click Active Intelligence platform. Webhooks provide a fast and easy way for enterprise applications to communicate with one another when a event occurs. In this case, the Click Active Intelligence platform allows you to trigger Click application automation workflows when certain events in Click Cloud occur, such as adding and deleting users and apps, or even when an app has finished reloading. In a previous release, you needed to be a tenant admin to set up these webhooks, and you had to do so in the management console. And users of Click application automation had to build in specific filters in their flows to control which apps and spaces they wanted the webhooks to work with. Well, in this latest update, now any user of Click Application Automation can do this, along with new filter parameters to select apps and spaces built directly in the webhook triggers. Let me show you how cool this is and how it works. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to give you a brief example of communication between two different systems, completely outside of Click Application Automation. On the left, we have the Click Active Intelligence Platform, in this case, my SaaS tenant, and we are in the Click Management Console. And then on the right, we have a simple site that allows me to test webhooks. So you'll notice here, I'm in the webhooks menu option, and we don't have any webhooks created. On the right, I'm just gonna create an example of a flow to give me a endpoint, in this case, a URL for a sample webhook. And we don't have to worry about authorization, authentication, etc. So I'm just gonna click new, and this automatically generates the webhook for me with a random URL that I can use. I'm accepting all the defaults. And then you can see this is that URL. So here I'm just gonna copy that link and you can see waiting for requests. So now I'm gonna to go to my management console and we're gonna create this webhook name, leave the description alone the URL, we're just gonna paste in that URL and then leave the secret blank. And then we don't have any additional parameters to be sent within the headers, but then we do have the events. We have two user events here, user deleted, user created, and then we have app created, app deleted, app data updated, and reload finished, published, and exported. So here we're just gonna take reload finish and click create. So now this webhook is created directly inside the Click Management Console. When a ClickSense app is reloaded, it's going to kick off this communication and kick off this URL, if you will, or trigger this URL. So let's go to an app and let's reload that app. I'll just wait a few seconds. And then on the right, you're going to see some interaction once it kicks off or triggers that particular URL. Okay, there you go. You can see success, reference the event data, client IP, etc. There's really not much in here other than whatever information is used within this particular sample workflow. Okay, so once again, the reason I'm showing this is the communication between the two systems. Okay, so now that that's been established, let's create a click application automation workflow that notifies my team on Slack when a ClickSense app is reloaded. Now you might've seen this before, however, it was done a little bit differently. I'm going to utilize the new webhook filtering option in the start block. Okay, so let's move over to our automations. Let's create a new automation. And I'm gonna select Slack. So I'm just gonna search for Slack and you can see we have a template Notify your team on Slack on app reload finished webhook. Now this template might not be updated just yet. As of the recording of this video, you can see it has two blocks in here that provide the old way of filtering on the particular app ID that you might be looking for. So we're going to remove these two blocks because they're no longer needed. And now I'm gonna connect the condition to the start block. Now by selecting the first block, you can see the run mode is webhook. If I move it to manual, you can see it 
uses the traditional start icon. Back to webhook, the connector is click cloud services. The event is app reload finished. And now you can see this new filter box that allows me to choose the app IDs that I want it to listen for. So we're gonna look up and I'm just gonna search for OG because I know the name of the app ends in OG and there it is. And we can do this multiple times or we can filter on space IDs. Now for the condition, you can see it has app reload finished, data status equals okay. We can leave that alone. If that is true, then we send a message to Slack. Let me just choose my connection and let me choose my channel. In this case, we're just gonna use a random. The text says that app name was reloaded successfully and the user it'll come from is click application automation. Now, if it does not load successfully, we can use the get reload record and this will get detailed information about the reload and we can actually send the log file in the message. So here a message is saying send failed. Let's just choose our connection again. Look up our channel. And then the same for this one here. And now you can see this has a line break, reload log, and then get reload record log will actually show the error message in the send message of Slack. So that's all we need to do. When I click save, watch what happens. You're gonna get a message here saying that the webhook subscription was created. So if we go to our click management console and we click refresh, you can see that new entry is now present. So earlier when I showed you how webhooks work and setting up tenant admin with the third party webhook, that was this one here. This one now is automatically set up when you saved that click application automation workflow. And if I edit it, you can see the URL is populated as well as the event for app reload finish. So at this time, now all we need to do is just reload our app. So I click reload. Let's bring our Slack into view. Just wait a moment and we'll get that message popped up right here in our channel. And there it is. App Retro Gaming Collection Analysis OG was reloaded successfully. Okay, so that is all I wanted to share with you in regards to the new webhook filtering improvement. Once again, just reiterating, all click application automation users can now do this when triggering webhooks, as well as make it easier to identify which ClickSense apps you want to use within those webhooks. All right, guys, leave your comments below and also let me know how you're using webhooks with your click application automation workflows. Take care.